Matt and I just had supper and we've come out to plant our cabbage, our little cabbage seedlings. We're expecting rain tonight. The ground's still a little wet from the recent rain we had, but it's dry enough that we're just going to go ahead and do it. If we don't, it's going to rain tomorrow, then it's going to be sunny for a day or two, then it's going to rain for two days, be sunny for a day, and then rain. In other words, we're just going to have to plant whenever we can in between the rain. So we planted 23 cabbage. That was pretty quick and painless, don't you think? Yeah, Matt's got the big guns. He, he said, I said, this went really fast. He said, it's because you've got such good help. <laughs> yeah, we could do more. It's very tempting, but it's the end of a long, tiring day. I'm tired out. Matt's worked hard today. Are you working on dugouts, building dugouts? Yeah, building new dugouts for a baseball field. Yeah, so he's tired too. So we think we're gonna go in and rest up and try again tomorrow if the rain Matt thinks the rain's gonna move out by dinner time anyway maybe yeah maybe we'll see so tomorrow evening if it does maybe we can get out and pick up sticks for sure yeah that's my favorite thing <laughs> Matt's favorite thing we just we need to fill the beds we've got to work on that I've got those two buckets of irises. We could cut those and it won't matter about how wet it is. Of course, it'll be muddy, but we could stick them in the mud. Stick in the mud. Yeah, see if they grow, see if they'll grow on those banks. Yep. It's a beautiful morning in the mountains of Appalachia. Our instinct about planting the cabbage yesterday though, because of the incoming rain was totally spot on. So I'm glad we got that planted. You can see behind me the, the small lake here. We had a lot of rain overnight, woke me up. It's, it was kind of a blowing rain, lots of wind. It bloated all into the porch, bloated all over everything on the porch. Sounded, I leave, we leave our window open in the bedroom slightly just so we can get some fresh air and it sounded like it was trying to blow in it. So a very rainy night, but all the rain's gone. The sun's coming up. I'm not sure what we can do out here today because of the, the muck, but we're gonna try to do something. It's just too hard to stay inside this time of the year when you want to be out and about. Um, it'd be perfect if it wasn't so wet and we could actually, you know, maybe plant some stuff or do something like that. I don't think we'll be able to do that, but it's just too hard to stay inside. So me and Matt both, this time of the year, even when it's wet or cold, we like to be outside. Well, we've been walking around, him hauling around, trying to figure out what we could do. It's pretty much too wet to do anything. I was so hoping we could cut up those irises and plant them on these banks in front of the um, new raised beds, but there's just no way. I mean, we'd just be, you'd just be in mud. It'd just be mud, so we're not going to do that. So what we are going to do, something we need to do, a dreaded chore, but hopefully we can get it done, is we're going to move that metal when they took it off our house to shingle it they put it just behind where it was handy put it behind one of our garden beds there and before we can plant in that bed it'll all have to be moved it needs to be moved anyway so we're going to tackle that job So it's turned out to be a beautiful day, even with all the mud. We, it was a Herculean task, but we got all the metal moved uh, to a place where we're going to store it until Matt's going to use some of it someday to build a shed, and then also Papa Tony's going to use some of it. We went in and had some dinner. Now we've got refreshed, reinvigorated to start again. Matt's going to go work on the electrical little issue so that we can make sure to get the fan going in the greenhouse. It's up to like 90 degrees in there, so it's it's getting really warm. And I think I'm going to go over and, and try to tackle some of the blackberry uh, brambles where last year we usually it's part of being um, a, a homeowner or a gardener especially if you have stuff like briars and plants and flowers and stuff any kind of thing like that you have to maintain it you have to keep up with it a lot of times what happens is other stuff you know invades it and you've got to clean it out and we do that every year usually but for some reason last year we never touched that little area where the 
uh, raspberries are. And we've only had them about two years, so they didn't even really produce last year more than a handful maybe of raspberries. But um, I've planted them beside Granny Gazzy's Rose, which was not the best place to plant them, but that's where I put them. And that whole little area just needs to be cleaned out really good. So Matt got the fan running. I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's just behind the camera, but it's running. So that's really great. That'll help those seedlings a lot. And I fought the briar patch and got a lot of it cleaned out. So that makes me feel a lot better. That needed to be done since last year and it just never got done. Uh, needs to have some more work done on it, but at least I got the worst of it. And then you could see Matt back there in the back. We're, we've about run out of steam, but we're gonna do one more job. He's gonna put together the bed that's gonna go beside this one on the um, bank where we had the raised beds areas graded out when Thomas was here. He's going to put together that and I'm going to kind of clean up and pick up some of the stuff that's just accumulated in front of the house while we've been having all the different little projects done. Matt and I were carrying the tin. I noticed this little patch of moss here. You can see, see how it's that part, how it's growing. Isn't that lovely? So beautiful. Since I live on the north side of the mountain, I have a lot of moss around my house and I just love it. I've always thought moss was magical. Ever since I was a little girl, I've been in love with it. I noticed the tiniest little flower. Look how tiny, you see my finger. It's the tiniest little thing, but so sweet and so delicate. downhill ain't it? No, it's fine. The wild violets and the dandelions are really blooming. Our backyard's pretty much a carpet of both. Amazing, all these shoots were growing underneath the metal after we got it moved. All all the way down through there, just white shoots where they were trying to find sunlight, but they just couldn't really find it because of the metal. Tired? Oh, yeah, tired. I'm busted. I'm about to faint. Mm-hmm. We got a lot done, though. We got some bugs with us. 
Just okay. moving the metal was a Herculean task. How many Matt counted? I just kept thinking, surely it's over. Surely there's only a few more. And then it was dece deceiving. It looked like there was only four more sheets and then you'd move one and then there would be like more under it that was uh, not slid out. So, it was uh, 51 pieces of it, I think. So we made almost 50 trips. Made 51 trips. 51 trips. Mm -hmm. oh. All the way across the yard and into the woods. No wonder we're tired. Mm -hmm. I was tired before we started. Yeah. Once we started, I thought, why did we decide to do this today? But it did need to be done. It needed to be moved. Didn't it? I'll do it sometime. Yeah, you gotta do it sometime. I've got a video I'll link to, but where I talk about encouragement, that's one of those chores like that's where you have to give yourself pep talks, give yourself some pep talks while you're doing it. Uh, Granny and Pap used to say, if it's something like that we dreaded, they'd say, well, you get it done and you'll sleep so good tonight. You'll sleep so good once it's done. What was it, Matt? You said another one that Pap would say while we were working. Uh, all we like is getting finished. Yeah. Or all we like is finishing it. All we like is finishing it. Somebody else has told me that their family said that, like when they were maybe planting tobacco or something. I think it was Ron Stevens, but I'm not sure. But once they planted the first one, and then their daddy or their grandpa or whoever would say, all right, boys, we got it licked now. All we've got to do is finish. <laughs> so that's the same thing with Pap, isn't it? He used to say, too, anything like that, that you dread and don't want to do, just jump in there and just first thing and just go at it and get it done. Pick up the reins instead and of, do it. Instead of kicking the dirt and dreading it and talking about it, get in there and do it. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people advise if it's something you don't want to do, do the what you don't want to do first and then the rest will be easy. But sometimes you don't want to do nothing. <laughs> That's the problem. But once you do, Granny and Pap was right about that. Once you get done, now we've got that done, we'll be sleeping good tonight. Mm -hmm. Sunshine has found us. We thought we had some shade. Yep. It's always nice though to do any any kind of job you do, whether it's physical labor or just, you know, something on the computer if you're if you're an office worker or something. But to be able to look back and see, ah, oh, see your progress, see what you got done. So it's nice to look over there and see that metal's gone. So every time I walked by it I thought it's probably hurting my grapevines and I can't plant we can't plant nothing there until we move it. Mm -hmm. Now it's moved. Now it's moved. Yeah. We had to slop through the mud to move it, but. Oh, it's muddy. It rained all night. It was raining at daylight this morning. Mm -hmm. It's turned out to be a real pretty day, though. Mm -hmm. That's more. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Today we've both been hot, you know, while we were working. Last Saturday. Was that just last Saturday? Mm -hmm. We were shivering at Austin and Corey's. I was shivering. My toes and my fingers were felt like they were frostbit. Mm -hmm. It was cold over there. And we wanted to come home and sit by the wood stove. And mm, hadn't thought about a wood stove today, have we? No. I'm thinking about supper, though. Yeah, Matt's hungry. <clears throat> Popsicle ain't gonna do it, is it? No. What was it the guy said on my brother, where art thou? He said when they, he got offered a gopher, or part of a gopher, he said, I'm afraid that a third of a gopher would only arouse my appetite. So you wouldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that how you are? You've come unfed? 
I'm unfed and pop second ain't gonna get it. Mm. Well, when you work hard, you gotta eat. You gotta have energy, fuel. Yeah. I'd like to have a big piece of meat, big around as a beach ball, what I'd like to have. With all that stuff off the bank, it, even though we've lived here almost 30 years, I'm still amazed at how steep it is. Well, well it's not the lay of the land ain't as, no, ain't as steep no, as what's where cut. It's, where it's cut down to make our flat place, right? But it's still fairly steep. Yeah. You know? <coughs> but that is steep. It is. Yeah. Days like today, when you were when we were kids, is when you start wanting to go barefooted. Did you go barefooted a lot? Mm -hmm. Papa have a certain day he allowed it, or he didn't care. He didn't care. I've heard lots of people say their mother would say, our father or whoever would say, by May first or Easter or different little things. They they couldn't go barefoot <coughs> till then. About uh, dew poisoning. That's in the fall. Right in the fall. Yeah, dew poisoning did. is in the fall. I never did know none of that. I just. When I took yeah. a nose, I went barefooted in the snow some. But I mean, wasn't nobody tell me not to, so yeah. I just done kind of how I wanted. Now there's like cold, people talk about cold therapy, like the plunge, cold, polar plunges and stuff. I mean, they do it for their health, though, not just for fun. But same thing, I guess, with walking on the snow. Maybe you were ahead of your time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I was just ignorant. <laughs> You were practicing cold therapy before it was a thing. Yeah. And Granny's always worrying about us taking cold. We'd take a cold if we, if you got outside with your, uh, if it's still like this time of the year, <coughs> still cool in the shadows, and you might take cold. Or if you went outside with your hair wet, couldn't wash your hair and go outside. All kinds of Grannyisms that she'd say. If you're sick, you better not go outside because you get take might take a back set if you've been sick. Comes a thunderstorm, put your shoes on. Yeah, if it take, comes a storm, you gotta put your ones. put your shoes on. <laughs> yeah, I finally found out where she got that one. Yeah. She was telling me about her grandfather was really scared uh, of storms, and he lived with them when she was growing up. And that's even in the middle of the night, he would get up and get dressed and put his shoes on, and just sit there until it was over. <laughs> so that's where she where I was like oh it explains a lot I don't even hear them anymore in the night no I don't much either yeah, I used to it used to wake me up yeah. and I used to be you know if it's a bad storm yeah I was worried about all these trees that used to be around the house and I was worried to death about the girls and the trees falling yeah I don't hear nothing anymore I used to be really scared of storms though when me and Matt was dating and first married oh yeah it was embarrassing it was embarrassing and uh I actually, it was a book that I read that helped me get over them, and the book had nothing to do with thunderstorms, but it was just telling the story of a, um, I can't even talk about it without crying, but uh, about a little girl in a different, in a war-torn country, and about, uh, you know, they had to save, you know, it was this horrible circumstance, and they were saving her and some other children where there was fighting going on, but anyway, it was a little story about her and about her sitting in the back of the truck, and uh, when the it was an American when he went over there she was singing she couldn't speak English but she could sing and somebody had taught her I mean she could sing in English but somebody had taught her Jesus loves me cool. yeah and then I thought oh my goodness uh, if that little girl can be that brave I shouldn't be afraid of thunderstorms in a in a nice safe sturdy house right. you know um, so yeah but I was very scared back then of storms, mm -hmm. but I'm not anymore. I hadn't been in a long time. I mean, <coughs> of course, you got to be take precaution if you're in a place where there's tornadoes and hurricanes and things like that. But typically, we don't have those things here. No. No. 
Matt was telling me that he saw there was bad storms in Mississippi yesterday, so we sure feel sorry for anybody that was affected by that. Yeah. That's a terrible, terrible thing. It's very, very rare where we live to have tornadoes, but it, it can happen. But uh, like the most recent one we had, there was no deaths. It was just damage. Yeah. And it wasn't severe damage like what he was talking about happened yesterday. Back in the 70s, the outbreak that was like, it's like in the history books, right? Yeah, Whatever. In multiple states. In multiple states. It did come through Murphy, and that one did kill people. And uh, I was too little to understand or to know what was going on. Uh, but I've heard Daddy and Granny talk about it. You know, and we lived, we didn't live here then. We lived over in March Creek. And Daddy talking about how eerie, how quiet everything was. But it did not come where we were at, so we were not affected at all. But I can remember afterwards, I remember seeing stuff, you know, and then seeing like the devastation, but I didn't really understand. I was too little. But that's really the only severe one in my lifetime. <coughs> and I was probably, I don't know, wasn't that like 73 or 74 or something like that? Yeah. Somewhere in there. So I was very young. Hey, you sleep good these days. Th things don't wake you up like they used to. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it it's is good. It's about ten years I didn't sleep any. Yeah. To amount to anything, just little bits here and there. Yeah. If I wake up, I can go back to sleep. Back now, Matt could, but in those days, and now he don't even wake up a lot of times. But in those days, if you got woke up in the night, you couldn't go back to sleep. You mm -hmm. might as well forget it. Right. That's it's a blessing. I'm blessed to be able to sleep. I bet we sleep good tonight. Yeah, you can sleep on command. Yeah, I pretty much can. Yeah. I bet we sleep good tonight, though. I don't know. Sometimes when I'm overly tired, I don't sleep. You don't sleep? Mm -hmm. All night long, you'll be carrying tin in your sleep, carrying metal. Do you right. do dream stuff like that or do stuff like that? Sometimes. Yeah. Those are my, like, stress dreams as I'm doing something over and over and over. Or I'm trying to do something. Like, I'm trying to call somebody, and I, I just can't make my phone work. Or I'm trying to do something on the computer, and I just can't make it work. And I just keep trying over and over and over. Or I'm trying to get somewhere, maybe go to work when I was still working, or go to wherever I'm going, and somebody's waiting on me, I know, and I can't get there. I just cannot get there. I keep running into stuff that stops me, and... And then I usually eventually get out of my car and try to walk to go. <laughs> Just all this, like these, all these, like an obstacle course trying to get to where I'm going. Those are my stress dreams. Except when I'm scared and then I wake Matt up doing my Scooby Doo ghost impression. Yeah, whatever that is. Yeah. It's just... Those are nightmares. Those are not stressful. They're just nightmares. I'm a ball of fun, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah. I'll keep you excited. It's never a dull moment. You know, on you and the girls. Yeah. Now, uh, Olive. Yeah. yeah. She's a mess, too. She so sure is. All she wants to do is bite me. Yeah, she likes to bite. Got skins all over my arms. I do today, but mine are from the briar patch. Go after your hair, briars do. You ain't got no hair. I don't have that them. problem. You don't have that problem. No. I do. They get that hurts worse than them poking me. Is when they get a hold of my hair. It's like they're trying to wrap you in, keep mm. you. little bit closer to planting. It won't be long. Of course we'll still have some cold weather between now and then. About five weeks. Yeah. Best thing is you got the fan fixed so it can yep. pull some of that hot air out. Can you believe how clear the stuff looks That's since crazy. we washed it? Yeah. Much better. It should get sunshine, man. It should get the heat. Should get in there better. Yeah. 
You just don't want to get it as hot as it would be without that fan. Right. You've got to exhaust that super hot heat. Yeah, pull it out. It's kind of a redneck greenhouse anyway. But it's, it's worked. worked. We've had it for we years and years. We built it. You built it in 2011. Really? Mm -hmm. That one it was? Yeah, 2011. I can't believe it stood there that long. Yeah, 2011. Earlier this week, Matt and I washed the outside of the greenhouse. That's what we're talking about. It had got so dingy. Uh, but yeah, you built it in 2011. We just, I guess you found the, figured out how to do it online or found a plan or what did you do? No, I come up with that plan myself. That's why I call it redneck. Oh. Uh, well, yeah. it works. It's worked since 2011. Well, it would work real good if it was in a place that wasn't a mud hole under yeah, it. Yeah, it worked real good. Yeah. It wasn't a mud hole for like the first seven years yeah, until our happened. weather changed and now it's, yeah, we're, we could grow rice back here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like to have, which we don't have the room so I can forget it, but I'd love to have a high tunnel so that you could raise up the sides and still grow during the summer. Right. But then uh, you could, you know, it'd just be easier to manage, I think. And if we had room for a high tunnel, then we could put it in the sunshine, which we don't and can't. But that the problem with that one is in the winter is that there's not enough sunshine to actually grow in it. And in the summer, because it's all closed in, even with that fan, it gets way too hot. At, like by what June, May, end of yeah. May, even yeah. May, even. I mean, by the first of May, it gets up to even with the fan going. What it's like 95 in there or yeah. something. It's way too hot for most things. I'm just burn them up. Yeah. But it works for starting the seedlings. Oh, it works great for that. Yeah. And there used to be a swing set sitting there, two swing sets. Yeah. And the that girls was, were little. Yeah, by 2011, let's see, how old would they have been? Ah, uh, 13 or 14, no, 13. Yeah, yeah. 14, or something yeah. like that. Anyway, beyond swing sets, they wasn't using them no more, and they'd just still been there. They had two. They had one that me and Matt bought them, and then somebody gave them one. It's why they had two. Mm -hmm. One was like one of those wooden jungle gym kind of things, mm -hmm. and then the other was just a regular swing set. But yeah, we got rid of the swing sets and built a greenhouse in, the, in their place. And raised bed. Mm -hmm. Well, two or three raised beds. Yep. Back then, it seems like, did your mom and daddy maybe chip in and buy the swing set for their, when we had it over on that side for their birthday or Christmas or something? I think so. Yeah, but, um, and where we did, were. Where did the wood one come from? It come from somebody get told, somebody give it to us. It come from some one of your mama's friends. I don't remember who, but somebody give it to us. They were taking it down. Their <laughs> kids no longer played with it. But the first one, we were excited for Corey and Cody to have it. That was that was before we had done the regrading, yeah. so it was back there. Yeah. Anyway, they it uh, to begin with, they liked the box that it come in better than the swing set. Yeah, we got pictures of yeah. them playing on the box. They played in the box, in the box on the box till they squished it, and then they yeah. just played on the box. But the swing set was uh, not like the ones when me and Matt were young. They had like, you know, either rubber or fabric seats that kind of molded to your backside when you were swinging. These were, and they was, I guess it's common still today, but like hard plastic. And they just could not sit in them. They just could not, they were so little, they just could not stay in them. They would slide out. And uh, so since they couldn't, couldn't stay in them, uh, and we tried to hold them in it and, you know, teach them and all that. But, of course, they wanted to go out and play without us, and, and they would. And then they, they just couldn't seem to figure out how to keep their backside in there. But they come up with their own way, remember? They would they laid on them, and then they'd push off, and then they'd pump their feet backwards. Remember that? Yeah, they'd lay with their belly on <laughs> yeah. the seat. And... 
both of them at the same time. And, and they, they got to where they could go, they could swing pretty good like that, yeah. yeah. So they did that until they got coordinated enough and big enough, they were little, to actually hold their self in the swing part. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, me and Matt tried to show, and it was just that they were, is that hard plastic, and they were so little, they just slide out of it. And we were finally like, I don't know. I mean, you're just gonna figure it out. And so they figured it out. They they rode on their bellies mm -hmm. and pumped backwards with their feet. That was funny. Yeah. And then finally they got big enough to sit in them. <coughs> and they was always in them outside in their underwear. Always, <laughs> yeah. wasn't they? They never had no yeah. clothes on. Yeah, they, they were those kids that take their clothes off. But that's good. I yeah. mean, just run wild, that's the way yeah. I do. Yeah. It's good for kids. It is. Run barefooted and get lots of sun. Yeah. They had those always, they was tan as they could be when yeah. they was growing up. They stayed outside all day, yeah. making mud pies, swinging, yeah. playing. Going up in the woods. They got a little up. older, they'd venture off up in the woods a little ways yeah. by themselves. They, them and their cousin April, they like, all three of them, they like to make clubhouses or playhouses. And so they, they had them in the woods up here, had trails. Uh, made where they could walk on the trails and then go to their hideouts and then they had them at Granny's and they had them down at Stephen Kim's they had one at every house they had a had a place a playhouse they had made and each of them would have a room and, and they have little trails going to and buddy they'd work on the trails like they were park service people or something <laughs> they they'd take yeah. their little saws and their clippers and, mm -hmm. and sweep the leaves they'd keep it all nice yeah, yeah. Those were the days, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You didn't have to worry, they was just in the backyard. Yep. I still like to swing though in a swing set. Can you get me a swing set? A big one? When do you swing in a swing I set? I don't. I just like it. If I go by one, if I see one, if I'm near one. Okay, that's good information. Yeah. <clears throat> I loved at Martins Creek School when I was growing up. They, they're they gone now, but they had the uh, those big metal, you know, their metal, big swings like they used to be. I don't mm -hmm. even know if the schools have those anymore like that. Anyway, I loved them. You could go really high and go high enough that the chains would pop as you went back down mm -hmm. and clank. And then if you're really brave, which I was never really brave, so I would never try this, but there were some people that would flip out backwards and then land on their feet. Mm -hmm. And everybody else was in amazement. Yeah. yeah. And there's always the one that would try it and land on top of their head and <laughs> be injured. And all the teachers and people would come running. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. ever remember nobody falling at March Creek, but I, but I was never brave enough to do that either. I can't really think of who it was that did it, but there were several, probably all boys, but that could do that. And they'd just be going really high and just flip out backwards and land on their feet. Pretty neat. Would you like to try that now? No. No. I was too afraid then. I'm sure too afraid now. You'd probably do it now. No, I don't think <clears throat> so. I do like to swing though. Can we build you a swing? Yeah, please. I you had. You have to wear a helmet in it and elbow pads. Yeah, and, probably, yeah. Uh, safety glasses. Yeah, probably. When we first moved into Pap and Granny's house, I was, I don't know, four or five years old, and there's a dogwood in the backyard. It's still there, still alive, and it just kind of had a, a little branch that come out perfectly for just, and it was, there was just grass under it for a swing, so Pap built me a swing there. And uh, I had a swing set, but it, and he did eventually get it, but the place that we were living at, every time he, and it was our swing set, but it was a house they rented. Well, as soon as we moved out, somebody else, you know, rented it. And every time he went over there to get my swing set, there was a little girl playing on it. And he just couldn't bear to take it away yeah. from her. But he did eventually get it. But anyway, uh, he built me that little swing and I'd swing in it. Paul was like a little baby, so he couldn't really swing. Steve was probably too old to care about swings, and I swung in it a lot. Uh, but one day it broke with me. The ropes got whatever, frayed, and it broke. And I, of course, it wasn't, I mean, it literally wasn't even waist high off the ground, waist high for a little kid. You know, I didn't have to climb in it or anything like that. 
but I cried and act like it hurt. I mean, I guess it did hurt me, but I, looking back, I was really carrying on and swore that it broke my back. And <laughs> I remember it was in the summer, you know, but Granny, to make me feel better, she got one of my big winter coats out that was long, real long, and she put that coat on me. <laughs> it was gonna help my back. <laughs> oh gosh, she did that just to pacify me and tell me that I'd be okay and all this. Yeah. After that, Pipe never built it back. I never had a swing in that tree again, probably because I acted like that. Yeah. Well, I'll go down and build you one in the same tree if you want it. You can go down there and do it. Go down there and swing until yeah. I, maybe it won't break with yeah. me this time. If you fall out and break it, I'm not making you another. Yeah. <clears throat> then when we did get the swing set, me and Paul, every day, that's what we did. We played on that swing set. We swung, made up play games and stuff too, but I was brave. I could hang upside down on my knees, you know. Mm -hmm. At Lawrence Creek, we had these really cool monkey bars. They had monkey bars, like the kind of, you know, octagon shaped things where you climb through them. But they had these three bars that were like small, really tall, and then medium. And we would like hook one knee on them and then go round and round and round and round and round. Mm -hmm. The girls, mostly. I don't really remember boys doing that. And then you hang by both knees and swing and swing and swing and then flip off. Mm -hmm. I'd be terrified to do any of that today. Well, yeah, we're a little old for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's important for kids to play like that, though. It is. A whole lot of them don't get it. No, get to do it now. Yeah. I mean, I ran totally unsupervised like that outside till way after dark. You know, and then a lot of times in the summer when it was getting warm, I mean, I wouldn't, it was a long time after dark. I would still be playing outside. Playing hide and seek or catching lightning bugs uh, or whatever. Who knows, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Riding your bike. Yeah. There's no helmets and there was no none of that stuff. And mm -hmm. We got wrecked and skint and cut and bruised. Yeah. That's all part of it, and that's all part of. That's good for kids to experience that, really. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get them hurt oh, bad. Oh no, but, right. You don't want to get them hurt bad, but uh, but falling off your bike's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wrecking and throwing yourself over the handlebars. And, mm -hmm. Nice wind up high, isn't it? It's, it is. The clouds are just flying across the sky, and the wind's way up high in the trees, rushing over the mountains. I asked Matt when we come back out from dinner, I said, why is it so windy? He said, because this is March. Yeah. It's howling across the top of the ridge, ain't it? Yep. Make you want to climb up there and experience it. If I wasn't so tired. See those big pine trees just whipping up there. Yeah. I'll be in the woods next weekend. Yeah. Turkey season opens mm -hmm. in Georgia. Is mm -hmm. it open here? When is it open here? Uh, the following weekend, I think. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. Hopefully it'll be good weather. I hope so. Hopefully it won't be raining. <laughs> Had enough of the rain. Oh my goodness. We may be wanting it come July, but we've certainly had too much for now. Yeah. Things are so wet. I need to go get this mud off me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're both muddy. It's up to my knees pretty much because my Richie legs, we kept getting down into the mud. Matt's got his big boots on, and I just have my shoes on. 
you need to throw them away. Yeah, my shoes are coming apart and I just keep wearing them. We did buy me a pair, but they hurt my feet so I can't wear them. So I've went back to wearing the ones that are pretty much coming apart all over. The soles coming off of them and they're ripped on top. Pretty bad. Yeah, they're pretty bad. They look pretty bad. But those others hurt my feet. I can't wear them. Well, we appreciate you visiting with us today while we got a lot of work done outside. We're both wore out, but it's a good time. Sometimes it's good to feel wore out, especially when you feel like you accomplished a lot. So we do. At this time of the year, every week that we work, uh, whether it's like yesterday trying to hurry and plant the cabbage or today all the stuff we got done, it's all inching us closer to that first tomato, that first cucumber. <laughs> first squash, all those wonderful, the first mess of this, first mess of lettuce and onions, all those wonderful oh, yeah, uh, that. foods onions. that we'll get to eat straight out of the garden. And we really appreciate you stopping by to, to help us celebrate Appalachia. Wind's crazy. Look to be all the way in the top of that tallest pine right there. Yeah, that'd be Just something. hanging on. That'd be the time it would break out probably. <laughs> No, I just have to ride it down to the Probably. end. That's a tall tree. It is, yeah. Just getting taller by the day. You'd go up there with a chainsaw and saw it down. I bet you that tree's 90 feet tall. I would say for sure. That one right there looks kind of like it's leaning. So with the pine beetles, they attacked everything and then they just left? I guess. They because didn't get those, the ones that we needed. I them know. Get. They should have got the ones yeah, around They eat all them up through yonder. I wish they'd have got them. I know. You can see two or three right up there they got. Yeah, I see that one up there, a big snake. Can't believe that ain't fell. You can't believe how many times I've shot that at the pellet gun. Really? Yeah. Huh. You can shoot it and it's like a delay and you can hear smack and you hear it hit it up there. Yeah. I see two actually right there. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if the beetles is like a life cycle or if they just ate and then moved on or moved on to another country or another area of the country. Or... I don't know. I wish they'd have doubled back and got them right there. I know. Me too. Of course, they'd probably fall in the dang yard if they did or fall on the greenhouse. Yeah. Of course, that was back before then, wasn't it? Yeah, even that one right there, that closest one, that's a pretty tall tree. It's yeah. little and skinny, but tall. Yeah, it needs to be cut. Uh, it's a Georgia pine. It needs to be cut. It needs to fall right down the top of that bank right there. Yeah. And the one right behind it needs to do the same thing, come right on it. And just go all the way through there. Cut them all. I want them all cut. I want those up there cut, too. Those are going to impede my sunshine. They probably already are. The clouds are just scurrying. Mm -hmm. I worked you too hard. Hmm? Did I work you too hard? I'm just tired from the last two or three days at work. It's been tough and I'm just tired. tired. And that dang headache this morning. You know. Yeah. It just, just completely zapped before we ever started. Start, I'll just start doing your neti pot every day. Here I am saying that I need to do it too. I did it this morning and it helped. Yeah. But uh, there's just something about them headaches just even if, the, if you get it stopped, it zaps my energy somehow. Oh, it does, somehow. yeah. I don't it know. takes it didn't away. Used to do me it takes way. away your energy. I mean, I don't have sinus headaches, but when I had migraines, it just, yeah, it just makes you... Absolutely drained. Yeah, it does. And foggy mind. And, yeah. It sure does. I'm going to have them about three days a week now. That's why I wonder if you do that every day, if that'd help it. Yeah. It's mostly yours is all in the morning, which is weird. 
I think you're allergic to something in our bedroom. <laughs> me? <laughs> you think you're allergic to me? Yeah. I don't know what you're going to do about that. Uh, no, I just think it's... I don't know what it is, but it's it's during the night and, and in, in early, you know, three, four, five in the mornings when I wake up with them. Yeah. And sometimes they're not as bad, and then sometimes they're absolutely crippling. I'm sure there's some dust in there. Probably. Like a dust. Vacuum up some dust. Probably olive. Mm -hmm. Reckon? Well, you was having them before her, wasn't you? But yeah, I'm sure she don't help. That leads back to you. Think you're allergic to me? I gotta get a prescription. You just have to leave. Get a doctor and who me? Yeah. Or make me leave. Yeah. You can move to the greenhouse. I have to get a wet suit. <laughs> a wet suit and some galoshes. Yeah. Boy, when Cory and Katie was little, they would have loved that mud. You couldn't have beat them out of No, it. they would have adored be that. In it. Yeah, they had to actually have water to make mud in those days. Yeah, now they dry. could just go right out there and sit down and play to their heart's content. Yeah. They'd have that all scraped up and put in a bucket and yeah. pour it in a mold and yeah. let it dry. And, and then serve it to us. And serve it to us. It. Yeah, they would have a field day with that. Mm -hmm. They would. Now yeah, this time of the year, especially with the pollen, maybe y'all start doing that every day. I should too. Next weekend, the pollen will be way, way worse because it's way further yeah. south. It'll be yellow down there. Yeah, it will be. <clears throat> and there's a little bit of it here now, but down mm -hmm. there it's... I mean, it's starting to green up already down there, so there'll be a lot of pollen. Yeah. I'll, and then inside that trailer, I'll probably my head will be busting Saturday morning. Yeah, probably. Take your nanny pot. Did you get one of those spray things, or you're just using the nanny pot? I'm just using nanny pot, but I, I, for a weekend trip, it's kind of hard to haul water and salt. I know, and I know. All the other crap I got to do. I know. Hello. All right, let's go. I'm going to have to go to sleep while we're sitting here. I'm walking myself to sleep. All right, let's go. One, two, three. Yeah, we're going to get that. Uh-oh.